stock slip after a firm open following the U.S. regulatory action to protect bank deposits. Utilities lead gains while the autos as well as the consumer discretionary is dragged today. Tech Mahindra Sages after Infosys's President Mohit Joshi is declared CEO designate for the IT major while a shorter than expected term extension for Indusind Bank CEO Sumankat Palia proves a damper. Blackstone has exited Sona BLW in which it was classified as a promoter via a 20% block trade while m and sells a big slice of its holding in Mahindra CIE which is now run by Spain CIE Automotive. An Adani Group stocks rally on a statement that says all share back promoter financing worth over $2 billion has been prepaid along with $500 million raised to finance the Ambuja Cements acquisition. U.S. regulators assure deposits of troubled Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank customers will be made whole even as they won't protect other investors. This soothes the nerves of rattled startups. Meanwhile, Silicon Valley Bank's UK arm gets sold to HSBC for a sum of one pound. Hello and welcome. You've tuned into Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me as always is my co-anchor Pavitra Parekh. And over the weekend actually, Pavitra, there was just so much news flow. And people were thinking, is this the Lehman moment for the startup world? And, but the U.S. regulators clearly have taken Stepping. action very, very quickly. Yeah. And that has sued nerves. In fact, I have been speaking to some of my friends in the industry, in the startup world. And yes, uh, the bank rolling and the support by the U.S. government to really pull out their money has been really a big, big relief coming in. But no relief for the markets at the moment. Nifty 50 down about 135 odd points. Uh, closer to the low point of the trading session, Sensex is also down close to 500 points. In the last few minutes of trade, there has been a little bit of buying, a little bit of uh, bottom uh, has been really arrested uh, for the markets. But Bank Nifty as well as Mid Caps, they both are the ones which are really a drag in the overall market and are showing a huge underperformance to the key indices. And net net, as far as the big companies part of Nifty 50 are concerned, most of them have seen a sell off except some of the news flow companies, especially Tech Mahindra is the one gaining the most in an otherwise very weak market. Adani Enterprises, ONGC, Apollo Hospital, JSW Steel, as well as Indalco, both from the metal pack, are the ones which are showing green. Advanced decline ratio is no, uh, uh, not a guess at all. Advances way lower than the decline, so the market sentiment is definitely reflective of the kind of nervousness that we have seen because of the SVB accident overseas yeah. as well. Well, oh, absolutely. It's a 1 is to 4 ratio that we're seeing for the advanced decline. So that really shows you the extent of the damage in the markets today. Let's talk about some of the individual spaces. Of course, we've mentioned the banks. All of the Nifty Bank constituents are in the red, but let's bring a few of them up. Of course, Indusind Bank is suffering, um, you know, the biggest blow today on the back of news flow that came through. But pretty, pretty much the entire pack, even if you look at the smaller banks, something like a South Indian Bank, Karnataka Bank, all of these seeing some sharp cuts. It is actually the Nifty Auto Pack, which is the biggest sectoral loser today. So it's down almost 1.4%. Um, also, a lot of the auto ancillary companies, of course, Mahindra CIE and Sona BLW on block trade. So those are up for you. But a bunch of the others, to so take a look at some Vardhana, you have Uno, Minda, um, a bunch of these are under pressure. In fact, um, you know, the Nifty IT is holding up pretty much only because of what's happening with Tech Mahindra. But a lot of the larger names, like you can see on your screen, have slipped into the red. Now, they were holding up for, you know, a better part of the morning, but they have slipped into the red right now. So that is one space to watch. And like Nisha was pointing out, the Adani group of stocks as well. But that's what's happening with the market action. Let's start the show with the big newsmaker over the weekend, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Only a couple of days after the collapse of the startup focus lender, crypto industry lender Signature Bank also shut shop on Sunday. 
Now, U.S. regulators stepped in to prevent the, uh, the contagion and systemic panic by announcing a plan to backstop depositors with both of the banks, so Silicon Valley Bank as well as Signature Bank, who will now have full access to their deposits. The U.S. Treasury, Federal Reserve, as well as the FDIC in a joint statement said that no losses associated with the resolution of Silicon Valley Bank as well as Signature Bank will be borne by the taxpayer. They, however, stayed, uh, stated that you know shareholders and certain unsecured debt holders will not be protected by the regulators. And that they also said that uh, they will make available some additional funding to depository institutions in order to assure that the banks have the ability to meet the needs of the depositors. So that was some news flow that came through, which sort of was a big relief for the market as well. But let's listen to some comments from Jeremy Siegel on the SVB fallout and how he sees the markets moving from here. The SVB changes the entire picture, uh, in my opinion. Uh, as you know, I've been criticizing the Fed. I think that they've been moving the rate up too fast, too high. Uh, I certainly have to say I didn't expect the bank to fail, but I felt uh, that there was going to be serious consequences from their action. And certainly last three days, we've seen some of those consequences. 50 basis points is totally off the table now. Um, I mean, I would prefer no increase, but the market expects 25 uh, basis points on their March uh, 22. But what is interesting is that the market right now, as I look at it, uh, only expects uh, perhaps one more hike after that um, mm. uh, instead of three to four that was expected uh, uh, earlier last week. So it is totally change the picture of what the Fed uh, is going to do. And uh, I, I think that's a good thing. All right. So many takeaways from that particular interaction earlier today. But this news on uh, Silicon Valley Bank is ever developing. One pound is what HSBC has paid for the UK arm. And now what will Fed do is the big question that everybody is asking. Moving on then, Nazara Tech tells CNBC TV18 that their two subsidiaries have an exposure of 64 crore rupees to SVB Financial. Now the management also told us earlier this morning that they were hopeful of recovering this entire amount due following overnight statements from the US regulators. Let's listen in to his comments. The overnight statement by Senator Yellen saying that the government will kind of, you know, ensure that all depositors are covered, not only the amounts covered by $250,000, but beyond that as well, uh, gives us a lot more hope. They offer, uh, you know, especially for international companies like ourselves and our subsidiaries, much faster on onboarding and on ramping, uh, you know, for accounts. Right, that is the word coming in from the Nazara Technologies Management. But in the latest, like we were telling you, banking giant HSBC is set to acquire the UK arm of Silicon Valley Bank, with UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt confirming the sale in a tweet just a short while ago. So we have uh, CNBC Sylvia, who's here, to fill us in with all of the details. Head of the market open. We know that the government, the British government, treated this as a top priority. They were essentially very concerned about the impact that the collapse of SVB UK could have for the UK economy in the sense of the, the size that the tech startup world actually represents in the British economy. Jeremy Hunt made that very clear on Sunday, and he also made it clear that for the time being, they do not see a systemic risk to the wider financial sector. In essence, Jeremy Hunt did highlight that there was indeed no systemic risk for the financial sector in the UK. I have to say as well that this announcement comes an important timing because let's not forget that on Friday, the European, the whole European banking index closed down by almost 4% and therefore there was clear urgency here for the British government to also avoid to see a similar reaction today in the market. So let's see what else we'll gather throughout the this morning but definitely the timing of this announcement is important and it does guarantee that those depositors that ask the government for, for help are actually assured for the time being so let's see how this will evolve but definitely for the time being a key important announcement from the UK's Treasury 
All right, uh, so big, big uh, resolution plan really taking place there. Solutions for SVB. With that, we'll slip into a short breather on business lunch. But up next, we get you a deep dive on Yes Bank, whose three year lock in period for the lenders ended today. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Business Lunch here on CNBC TV 18. And an important story we are tracking today is that Yes Bank's three-year locking for shareholders ends today. Abhishek is standing by at the big wall with all of the details on how the bank has really fared over the last three years, as well as the stake with the shareholders now. Abhishek? Uh, well, as you mentioned, you know, Yes Bank, a bank almost on the verge of collapsing, was saved by RBI thanks to the capital infusion from other lenders. Now, let's first revisit the journey. What business momentum Yes Bank lost in one fiscal, that is FI20? It's been three years and they have not been able to recover from it. And this shook the faith of its customers. So, in FI20 versus FI19, YesBank saw deposit withdrawing uh, from their, uh, you know, customers by about 1.22 lakh crore on net basis and the loan book also shrunk by more than 70,000 crore in FI20 when compared to FI19. So in last three years, Yes Bank's deposit base uh, from Q4 FI20 to Q3 FI23 has grown by a little more than 1 lakh 8,000 crore and the advances base has grown by a little more than 23,100 crore in the same period. Hence, Yes Bank is yet to recover the loss of deposit as well as the loan book base that the bank had witnessed uh, sharp decline in its market share as well. So taking a look at market share, the deposit market share was at 1.81% in FI19, which moved to about 0.78% in FI20 and is now at 1.2%. The advances market share moved from 2.47% in FI19 to about 1.65% in FI20 and is now at 1.45%. So now let's take a look at what happened to the stress portfolio. Gross NPA ratio actually increased to 18.9% and net NPA ratio rose to 6% for the bank in Q3 FI20. This had an impact on the capital level of the bank, which went down to a capital adequacy ratio of 4.2% with tier 1 ratio of just 2.1%. This led to RBI getting various lenders on board uh, with respect to capitalizing uh, Yes Bank. Coming back to today, lenders who gave capital to Yes Bank have a lock-in period which uh, began in 12th March uh, 2020 to right now about 12th March 2023, which means you know the shares can be sold today. A total of about 1,090 crore odd shares are held by lenders. This forms nearly about 38% stake in the bank. The important point to note is that the entire 1,090 odd crore shares will not be sold at one go. So on your screen, you can see the current stake of various banks in the S-Bank, uh, SBI about 26.1%, SDFC Limited about 3.5%, ICICI Bank about 2.6%, Axis Bank at 1.6%, Kotak Mahindra Bank about 1.3%, Bandhan Bank and IDFC First Bank close to 1% and Federal Bank about 0.8%. So we need to see when these lenders choose to exit these investments or not. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Abhishek, for deep diving and reminiscing the big bailout of Yes Bank three years back. And today is an important milestone. With that, we'll slip into a short breather on Business Lunch. But here's a quick programming note. Uh, tomorrow, on the 14th of March, CNBC TV 18 will host what will be India's largest summit on gender parity in Delhi. Now, women leaders from all walks of life will come together to brainstorm and help take decisive steps to bridge the gender inequality that exists in India and across the world. Now, the event starts at 4.30 p.m. tomorrow and you can catch all the live action right here on CNBC TV 18. Don't miss it. Welcome back. You're watching Business Lunch and let's get you some important national developments for today. Well, the farmers in the state of Maharashtra organized a march from Nasik to Mumbai seeking various reforms in the agriculture sector and also tribal land acquisitions. Protest against the sharp dip in prices of crops such as onion, tomatoes, as well as fenugreek leaves, coriander leaves and cauliflower. Now, meanwhile, Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde has announced in the Assembly today that the state government will provide a compensation of 300 rupees per quintal on onion, to the onion farmers. In fact, last week, Santhi Agora, our colleague, spoke to farmers on the falling prices of onions 
and the impact. Here's what they had to say. तीन रुपए से साढ़े तीन रुपए तक कांदा गया है अभी। आपकी भी रसीद में दिख रहा है कि ढाई रुपए में ही गया है आपका प्याज भी? हाँ, ढाई रुपए किलो भी गया है अभी। तीन रुपए एकतीस पैसा केजी। दो रुपए नब्बे पैसे केजी के भाव बेच दिया है। उसमें कुछ भी नहीं मिल रहा है। कुल मिला के पचास साठ हजार रुपए खर्च आता ही एक एक करके लिए पंद्रह बीस रुपए किलो प्रति किलो पिकाने के लिए खर्च आ रहा है और उसका माल दो रुपए तीन रुपए चार रुपए किलो बिक रहा है एक एक कड़ में अगर दो ट्रैक्टर भरा तो ट्रैक्टर भरने का पंद्रह सौ रुपए लेती यानी घर से इधर लाने तक बीस हजार रुपए खर्च एक कर में आ रहा है दवाई एक एक कर दवाई का पाँच हजार लगते है खाद दस हजार के लगती है All right, that is an important story that we are tracking. We'll keep bringing you more information that we can pick up on this as well. In fact, all over social media also, there have been pictures across the board of, you know, farmers destroying their own crops because of this low price. But moving on, now I also have to bring you the latest from the Academy Awards. India has backed two awards at the 95th Academy Awards. The first reason for celebration came in the form of the, the hit dance number Natu Natu from the film RRR, which backed the Oscar in the Best Original Song category, composed by M.M. Kiravani. The song has been raking in awards from around the globe. So this was a big one. India's second triumph also came in the form of the Elephant Whisperers, which bagged the best Oscar for the documentary short category. The docufilm by Gunit Monga revolves around an orphaned baby elephant and explores the human-animal bond. Meanwhile, Brendan Fraser was declared the best actor for his powerful performance as an obese teacher in The Whale. Michelle Yeoh won the award for the best actress for her performance in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. In fact, she is the first Asian woman to bag this honor. So that is an important uh, you know, piece of news coming in there. And Everything, Everywhere, All at Once has bagged seven Oscars overall, including the award for the best picture, director, as well as original screenplay. You know, Pavitra, everything, everywhere, all at once is such a masterpiece. It has so many social messaging for the present time. Yeah. So I really like this particular film. And also a very proud moment for Indian film fraternity yeah. and not just Bollywood, film fraternity. So really great day at Oscars. With that, completely out of time on Business Lunch. Stay tuned. We have an exclusive conversation coming in with the CII President Sanjeev Bajaj right after this short break. Stay tuned.